Hey guys, let's hit new game this time, because I was in the first area, but something was wrong. I was like, oh, there was no opening cutscene. I'm having to explain the story of this game all myself. The gameplay, we're just jumping right into the gameplay with no exposition, which was great, but something felt wrong. Oh, hit the right button. Okay. Um, we want normal difficulty, because clearly I'm a dweeb. My name is Christian. That's me there reading from a book that someone was kind enough to give to me. The book was called The Holy Bible. In it, I learned that the city I lived in, the city of destruction, would soon be destroyed by fire. I also learned that I'd been carrying a large burden. It was the burden of my sin. It was full of my lies, my blasphemies, my theft, and every other evil thing. I feared that when I died, my burden would be so heavy that it would sink me lower than the grave. So I spent my days reading from my book, crying, not knowing what to do. It was that day I met Evangelist. What must I do to be saved? Excuse me, sir, but what troubles you so much? I've been reading from this good book, and I know that I'm doomed to die for the sins that I carry, and I'm afraid that when I die, my burden will be so heavy that it will sink me lower than the grave. So, would you like to escape from the city, and also free yourself from that burden? Yes, but I can't see how that would be possible. I'm a wretched person. How can sin be undone? What hope is there for me? Outside this city, there is a light that shines from across the distant field. Leave this city and journey across that field in search of the light. Keep going until you reach a small gate. When you get there, knock, and you will be told what to do. Now go. Escape from the city and find the small gate. I love the, uh, sort of 17th century, very fancy font used throughout this game. Um, this game starts us right off in the City of Destruction. This game is based on the John Bunyan novel, and, which was written in, in the 1670s, I believe. It's a Christian allegory book about a, a pilgrim who's sort of the everyday Christian um, going on a journey and learning, you know, experiencing the temptations of the world. Um, oh, this might be kind of tough, actually. Let's see. So each enemy is weak to a different thing. So this guy might not be weak to faith. He's, or he's weaker to grace than he is to faith. As you have five, like, different things. Um, uh, let's try grace again. Okay, he's getting there. Grace again. One more grace ought to do it. Actually, one more of anything ought to do it. Um, we can heal, but we don't need to because we can just heal in between battles, I think. Yeah, like that. If we have Bibles, we can give them to these little girls. Uh, or boys. They're both. Um, and now we have a quest, which is to find ten NPCs, which, I mean, which respawn anyway. Uh, but each NPC uh, will count uh, towards your quest, so you can do that. Um, are you actually weak to grace? Or did I just get stronger? Temporarily. Are you weak to promise? Promise, I see. Eh, n not everybody might like this game because of the heavy Christian themes. But I think it's pretty cool. I'm a well-respected man. Um, press the up arrow to warn him of destruction. It's the same exact guy. I think people think that uh, Scott reused this character model for um, William Afton in Pizzeria Simulator, um, but I guess he didn't. But still, Scott Scott is pretty terrible at. I haven't seen this. I don't remember that character. Okay, that's interesting. I have beaten this game once, and I got most everything, but as we saw there, there's probably still things that I've missed. Another NPC. Another enemy. This game can get pretty tedious with the RPG battles. Also, it's pretty typical uh, Scott Cawthon. I just love, like... Scott Cawthon has, like, a very typical, like, uh, sort of... I don't know, all his graphics kind of look like PS1 graphics. 
Like he has these big cities in the background that kind of look like they came out of like, I don't know, almost like a Lego city building game, but like in a really cool way. I, I like the way he does these like big cities in the background. Uh, and we'll see that with like castles and buildings. Um, he's, he's good at doing kind of like generic CGI looking things, but things that also look like really pretty and kind of quirky at the same time. I mean, look at this house. This house is all kind of curvy and weird and bent. And it's supposed to be like that because this city is in sin and its values are not totally in line. Uh, it's things are askew here. Um, but yeah, it's got that kind of good Scott Cawthon cheese. I mean, there's just, like Times New Roman font just everywhere, or like these different fonts, like, I'm not sure what some of these other fonts are, but like probably Calibri is in here somewhere, or, or Georgia, or these sort of uh, typical like early 2000s fonts. I don't know. Anyway, now we can level up a bit. We'll do that. Um, pull up, okay, press tab to exit out of the menu. So really, this there's not that much to this game. Uh, it's a long-ish game. I mean, not long, long, but like, not lang lang either. Um, but for a game, for a 2D side-scroller with RPG elements, where the RPG elements are pretty much the same thing every time, every time, every time, every time, uh, the game has a, you know, neat story and lots of areas, and it tells pretty much the whole book story of the original Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. Um, yeah. Um... As we know, Scott Cawthon has retired from the video games industry. Um, I am exactly one coin short. Dang. Um, let's see if there are more citizens down here. Get a little bit of experience for each citizen. Let's fight some more filth. And at some point, sure, I'll probably start cutting out these battles. Um, I've been doing a lot of RPGs lately just finished Hylix, um, which feels like a while ago because I've, all, all I've been doing is Evan's Remains recently, but finally I'm done with Evan's Remains, so I can start a new game, which is a nice feeling. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Mr. Pilgrim here has, has this burden on his back which is supposed to represent sin, it's, it's weighing him down, you know, you can't get get very far without just kind of getting totally exhausted by the burden of his sin, um, which makes sense, that is, oh, look at that cross there, that's interesting, um, this is kind of a typical, like, video game sewer <laughs> level, it kind of reminds me of, uh, um, I played um, Snoopy's Grand Adventure on the Wii U recently, which wasn't a terrible game because the graphics were kind of nice and cute, and because I'm a big Peanuts fan. Um, but it was a platformer made by Activision, so as you can imagine, it was pretty bland and cliche, and it had like three or four levels in a row that were that all took place in Paris. For some reason, I guess it's supposed to be because Snoopy is obsessed with Paris. But like, then the last level was supposed to be Schroeder's house. Because of, of the musical theme. And we don't really need to see any more of this NPC dialogue. I guess I could talk about how I got this game. Still don't have any Bibles. Um... This game can be bought online from Hope Animation, which is a British company, I believe, but Scott Coffin used to work for it as an animator and game designer. Um, 
Scott Cawthon did lots of Christian animations for Hope Animation. There's even that Blob Go Gab Go Lab thing that Kanye sampled, and yes, that is from a children's animated movie that Scott Cawthon worked on. Um, but there's a guy named David or something in the UK who still operates the Hope, uh, Hope Animations website. So, you go through the website and you send an email to this David guy. You PayPal like three or four dollars, which is funny because like the game's price is listed in British pounds, but then you pay in dollars. And then David sends an email saying, thanks, I hope you enjoy the game. Even though this is freaking like, this game is like 10 years old by now or, or something. I don't, I don't remember how old this game is, but it's at least like, it's before Desolate Hope and Desolate Hope is 10 years old now. So, neighbors, why are you here? We've come to take you back with us, of course. That's not possible. The city is going to be destroyed with fire. Come with me instead. And leave our friends and comforts behind? What you, could you possibly be searching for that would be worth leaving the whole world behind you? Peace and love. All of this is worthless compared with just a small piece of what I hope to enjoy. I seek an inheritance in heaven, away from this world. Read about it here in this book. Away with your book. Are you coming back with us or not? I can't. Very well then. Let's go, Pliable. Wait a minute, Obstinate. What if what he says is true? Maybe we should go with him. What's this, more fools still? There's no telling where this brain-sick man will lead you. Go on with him, then. You'll be back. Well, we better get going. I'll run ahead and meet you at the end of this field. Uh, Pliable doesn't seem like the brightest tool in the shed. I mean, his name is kind of on the nose. As with everybody else's name, I mean, this is a... Why is it making... What does that sound signify? Anything? It's a dude with a shepherd's cane. Okay. But we're not a sheep. This is a lovely farm. It reminds me of driving through Virginia or, or something. It's just, it's just just lovely. Look at those beautiful corn fields marked out with the fence, you know, with the wheat and the scarecrows and the, and the sunset. It's just really beautiful. I mean, it's kind of like corny Americana at this point, but like, I really love, I kind of love every time I get to go on a road trip with my parents. It's just kind of peaceful, almost. Is this your promised land? If this is what happens at the start of our journey, who knows what will happen later? I'm going home. Some of these landscapes in this game actually kind of remind me of uh, that Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland Wii game. That was one of my favorite games growing up and that I've done on this channel. It's my very first playthrough, so the quality is terrible, but you can watch it if you so want. If you want to hear what 15-year-old Helium Lemon actually sounded like. Uh, uh, I don't know that 23-year-old Helium Lemon is that much better, but... And yes, that is how I came up with Helium Lemon 15. Because I started making the... Oh, crap, I'm gonna die. Please don't kill me. Please don't. Pray for... Spirit. Yeah, thank you. This guy is covered in thorns. Looks like a Batman villain, almost. Are you weak to truth? No, I don't think so. Let's see. His name is Shame. So maybe he's weak to grace. Yeah. Gonna have to think like a Christian in order to beat some of the... get better at some of the RPG elements in this game. So I'm probably... Oh, God. Look at that terrible 3D splash effect. That's obviously just a texture. Like a flat texture with like a lazy little animation coming out of it. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is probably the end of episode one, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.